everybody. Welcome back for more. I would camp that. We are on a lovely dirt road just past the Frank Slide Interpretive Center as we continue our Crow's Nest Pass series. Uh, the weather has cleared up, the sun is out. Uh, this would actually be a really good day to throw the panels out, but we are going for a hike today. We're gonna to be going to the staging point for a hike, which takes us to an abandoned town site for an old town called Lil from the early 1900s. Uh, old coal mining town, I believe. Uh, there used to be a railway track going out there as well too. And uh, not, not a very difficult hike. There's not a lot left in the old town site either. Uh, but there are some things to see, so we're looking forward to showing those to you folks. There's some cool stuff to see on the way there as well too on the hike. And the road there is pretty bumpy, so we're gonna have some fun driving out there. Ain't this a beaut? Right below an electrical tower, nice wide open, quiet area. The start of our hike is over there. And I'm loving the weather today. Everything just smells fresh and renewed after all the rain yesterday. My memories of this hike last year are pretty sketchy, not knowing I was diabetic and just some of the memory loss that came with that. I know that's come up a lot this trip, but that was a huge negative factor of last year's trip. So it's, you know, I feel like I'm overcoming those uh, bad experiences and memories and all that stuff. The sun is behind some clouds right now, but it, like, it's nice and cool. Like, I think I'll probably be wearing a coat for this hike. Definitely be wearing pants. Right now I'm just wearing shorts. And uh, yeah, no, really excited to do this. Last year, we had our good friends, Mindy and Rob, join us for this hike. Um, I do have some photos from that last year's hike that I'll uh, slot into the video here. It's a pity they couldn't join us this year, but I'm excited for Rita and I to get down the road and uh, experience this hike again. And for me to actually remember it this time. You wanna carry the binoculars? Sure, yeah, I can take those in my bag. Yeah, I definitely don't utilize my go bag well enough. I, I feel like I utilize it better in the winter, but um, summer and spring, not so much. I'll probably uh, hijack some space in your bag to take some uh, picnic essentials up with us. Yep, sounds good. So Rita has prepped a picnic lunch. She has been talking about this since the failed attempt at a series last year. And we're gonna be taking the contents of the water jug. Uh, we are getting low on potable water, so we'll have to fill that later. And she's putting it in her uh, platypus uh, camelback thing with a straw that goes in her backpack. I just made Dustin promise he won't backwash since he doesn't have his own. I'll do my best. Okay. Have you ever had that thing leak on you at all? Or? No, like this part right here, getting this lid on is kind yeah. of tricky because it is such a firm seal. 
Do you need my help at all? No, I'm good. It is designed quite in quite ingeniously. Like you have this big open space to put your water in. Mm -hmm. You have a handle to hold it because of course you can't really fill it if it's laying flat and the water's just sloshing out. Yep. There's a hook here. So if you want to hang it up somewhere or okay. drying and cleaning. And I've never actually removed this part here, but I haven't had need to Probably yet. just if you need to clean the the filter or the actual exactly. straw itself. I know it seems very tempting to put coffee, energy drinks, juice in here, but don't Ugh. do it. Just, just stick with water. You don't need to clean it as much. <laughs> that would be a nightmare to clean. So while we're away, I'm trying something a little different. <laughs> I've got one of the panels out. Actually fits quite nicely on the dashboard. The only thing that we had a whole bunch of batteries and stuff charging when we were coming up the road. The only thing we have plugged in now is the fridge. Uh, I can hear the fridge humming pretty loud, so it is working to get back to its target temperature. Um, it's pretty cloudy. The sun is kind of piercing through the clouds a bit, but not very much. So I don't know how useful this is going to be. Right now, the panel's bringing in between like 9 and 13 watts. The fridge is using like 44 right now. But once it gets to its target temperature, the fridge won't be using much at all. So we might be able to at least maintain our power we're sitting at 36 percent on the jackery or maybe get up a percent or two we'll see it's my duty to report to all of you that for the sake of the world we live in i'm now wearing pants won't someone think of the children well clearly i am you're welcome <laughs> With all the uh, rain that we had yesterday, some parts of the ground are a bit mucky, so we'll have to be watching our step. Good investment getting these hiking sticks. Yeah. Hey, babe. Oh yeah. Not too many paces into the hike. We can see a stream just working its way down there. We get to listen to that as we're doing this hike. Beautiful. It's such a slice of heaven out here. Mm -hmm. And a touch of fall color this time around. Yeah, my memories are pretty fragmented from last year's attempt at this series, but I do remember it being so hot. And now we get a nice mix of, you know, it's still nice enough out, but there's a nice cool breeze coming in. Hence the big brown coat. Walking sticks are great. It's a lot of loose gravel on the road. Mm -hmm. And if the, if you feel the stone turning underneath your feet, at least you're already braced with your walking stick. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have for sure. Oh. Oh, hey. Look at this beauty. I don't think that's functional anymore. It's well ventilated though, like a lot of the abandoned houses that we find. <laughs> well, there's the bumper, at least the bumper's intact. Um, the seats, the, the, <laughs> the hood, the everything isn't, but the bumper's intact. I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> Ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> At this point, you put gas in this thing, you're just torching it. <laughs> if somebody didn't do that already. Wires are held together with a whole lot of electrical tape. 
Just needs a little T-Rex uh, tape and elbow grease. It's still good. It's still good. Yeah, just don't step into the cow pat beside you. Looks like somebody did that already. In addition to finding the old town site of Lil, there's a cemetery that we weren't able to find last year. We, um, we made the mistake when we were out with Mindy and Rob. We did like two hikes in a day and this was our last one. And by the time we got to Lil, we were all like super played out. And of course, I didn't know I was diabetic. So I was like zombified chicken fried cow poop. So uh, that was a lot of, that was a lot of different creatures in one statement, but uh, we weren't able to find uh, this cemetery that's allegedly on the way to the town of Lil. So we're gonna try to find that this time around. Oh, they've got a, a little map here, yeah. eh? So this is why we couldn't find the cemetery. We are here, we're on the trail. Uh -huh. uh, this uh, line right here is the Ghost Railway. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much been dismantled, but if you were here in the early winter, the snow would cover the area and then the residual heat from the buried tracks mm. would melt the snow on top of it, Hel hence the Ghost Railway. You can't see it <laughs> until you have that perfect snow Fair cover. Enough. So anyway, uh, we'll be passing by a loop in the trail for the number one mine. And this is why the cemetery is so difficult to find. There's no dedicated trail going directly to it. It's kind of a, you're on your own. Right, but look at this. It's just, if this is, cause this is north. If this, if it's directly west, then we just have to go to our left at the next water crossing. Before, we'll, yeah, before yeah, the next water crossing. Because we just did the first water crossing. So the next water crossing, we know we have to bank to the left. Mm -hmm. okay. And then of course we're following Gold Creek the whole way town site is at the end of this trail here yeah uh there's actually more AT atv drills going way past the town site but we're not going to worry about that yeah. there's no dedicated trails going to mine two or three but honestly um if they are doing things safely those would already be blocked and buried to avoid yeah. tourists falling into them yeah don't want to go into any of those old mines that's a recipe for a quick death yeah scary thing is um there's documentaries you can go and watch at the frank slide interpretive center and some of these mines, like you'll get people that'll just throw caution to the wind and try to break into them, not thinking about their safety, not thinking anything bad will happen to them. And like, sometimes you go deep enough in some of those old mines, there's poisonous vapors, unstable ground. Like it's to the point where even if someone tried to come in and help you, they could die just trying to come in and help you. So at this point, the trail consists almost entirely of little bits of coal and coal slag, which have worked their way down from this hillside over here. You can see erosion is just bringing more and more coal down. Um, from the maps that we have looked at, I do believe that mine number one was somewhere in the vicinity of that hilltop over there the railway would have passed very close by here if not right over that ridge to collect coal and then send it back down to frank so the path continues ahead over this way we've got a dirt road goes up to yet another electrical tower up the hill they meet a little bit past there's the atv trail and there's the walking trail yeah they just do loop to loops around each other I had a funny thought while on this hike. In the unlikely event that we got horrifically lost, we could simply follow the electrical towers back to where the truck was parked. On that note, there's our beautiful home on wheels from far away. And yes, I did yell out a well-deserved, I love you. My memories of this hike from last year due to not knowing that I'm diabetic at the time were so broken and foggy. So it was such a joy and a privilege to get out and do this again. You said you did take a picture of the map, right? Yeah, not that the map is super accurate and we don't have like a GPS tracker or anything to yeah. tell us exactly where we are. And the little cemetery is quite a ways off the trail yeah like we're not talking multiple kilometers but there's no dedicated trail to it yeah and we also cannot see the railway the the ghost railway in yeah. the season which would have been a good indicator of where to 
turn and try to get to the cemetery. My vote is we, when we get to the next water crossing, we bank left and we make for the cemetery. Obviously, if we hit when we hit the old town site of Lil, we know we've gone too far. So even if we hit that first, we can always work our way back and then bank right at some point. Okay. West and try to try to find it from there. Okay, let's get back on the trail. Nice gentle breeze rolling in, feels good. Honestly, babe, looking over at this trail here, I, I'm obviously just speculating, but I hear the water up ahead. This might even be the way uh, when we come back. I seem to recall that there's a couple angler tra trails that kind of go yeah. off to the side because they don't want to be sharing water where the ATV years are going past. Yeah, on that note, Rita said she just wants to go poke her head up this way. So I will dutifully follow from behind. like a good pack mule. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, there's a campsite over there. Oh! Let's go have a sit. It looks like they have a log bench that somebody made. Oh, cool. Nice wide open area here. Mm -hmm. It's, um, the grass out here is actually looks like it's pretty well maintained. So I'd venture to say, I mean, even the trail out here looks pretty well maintained. Somebody definitely takes care of this. You can see the bridge over there. Yeah, so that's the bridge we, we were going to be taking over that way. Mm -hmm. I never did bring the uh, water shoes with me. Yeah. I took them out of my bag. Well, that's okay. Wet feet on a hike, it doesn't sound like my idea of a good time. Oh, this is a beauty. This has been well loved. And I love that someone's been taking care of this area. Well, the cows are taking care of it. They gra graze the grass down. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it almost looks like somebody gets out here and tends to it as well too. Like this is pretty nice for uh, off the beaten path of a hiking trail. And then we've got uh, is that old pieces of old pieces of a bridge. Yeah, judging. probably some old fence posts in here too. Yeah. You said you saw something, Rita. Yeah, look, there's one of those tiny little yellow trail signs over there. So oh. I said that there was no concrete sign leading to the cemetery, but the map that they posted at the trailhead. Uh, you have to take with not just a grain of salt, but a hefty pinch because we've already had more water crossings than the map says. So I want to see if this trail leads to the cemetery and it's not as much of a guesswork as I thought. Yeah, and it stands to reason. I mean, if that's on the map and it's intended for, you know, tourists and hikers to see it, then it stands to reason they'd want there to be a, a clear way to get there. Well, let's see what the little sign says. Maybe it's yeah. a clue. Well, we might be going to the cemetery first after all. The randomness continues. <laughs> Cemetery. Does it? It says Little Cemetery. Little Cemetery. Woo hoo hoo! Nice. So here's a little sign that says that this small cemetery served the community, with a short list of known individuals. There's a picture from the museum archives of a stone headstone that might be in the lo uh, immediate vicinity here. If I step back and pan, there isn't really a clear indicator that there's anything here. I'm not too sure if it's further up the trail or if we need to really, really look for it. What do you think, Dustin? Uh, oh, I mean, the trail continues this way. The thing is though, with that stone, like I don't know how much of it is even intact anymore. So if we, can't, if we don't find anything, wait. Do, do you see something? Is that, is that a piece of wood or is that a stone? Uh, lead the way. It is. Wow. Oh. It's some... Wow. Oh, this is... Wait. They're still actively... Okay, this is a little old. This is a person, Leonard Raymond Bear Atchison, uh, September 23rd, 58, to November 28th, 2010. 
So, and there's, yeah, and then there's, what does that say? 1903 to 1982, James Vance Patera. So they must still be doing memorials here, much like memorial benches or plaques. Wow. Perhaps if you had family from this town originally or a deep connection here. Yeah, I just want to get up a little closer. Of course. Wow, that is beautiful. That is, oh, that's an old one. On closer inspection, this was a Mrs. Mrs. Alice Petiot? Pet Petio? Petio? I feel like in French Mrs. names, the last T is usually silent. Yeah. It's difficult to describe how I feel when Rita and I approach places like this. It elicits similar feelings to the Frank Slide disaster, which we touched on earlier in our Crow's Nest Pass series. It's a strange feeling, one of sadness, but also one of a deep respect. It is a privilege to come into this area, admire its beauty, and pay our respects. The sign indicated that numerous people are buried here, but those are only the people that are actually known, so there's a good possibility that there are other people buried in and around this area, forgotten to the annals of time. After our visit, we started making our way back the way we came to get back on the trail and continue our trek to the abandoned town site of Lil. We'll see you all in part two of this hike to Lil.